The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Ivo Bantambia, your physics teacher. Our lesson today is for the Form 4 class. We are going to begin this lesson with a, cor with a correction of the assignment I gave you in the previous lesson. Remember, in our previous lesson, we treated properties of waves. So, we are going to take these questions. Distinguish between mechanical and electromagnetic waves. B, progressive and stationary waves. I suppose you have your answers correct. So for the first question, the difference between mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves is, mechanical waves require a material medium for their propagation. These are waves that need a material medium to pass through. Whereas electromagnetic waves are waves that do not require any material medium for their propagation. That means they can pass through a vacuum. An example of a mechanical wave is sound waves. Sound will not pass through without a medium like air or a fluid or a solid material. Whereas light is an electromagnetic wave because it does not need a material medium to pass through. For instance, we receive light from the sun, and between the sun and the earth, there exists a vacuum, yet light can pass through this vacuum. So light is an electromagnetic wave. The difference between progressive and stationary waves we have, in a progressive wave, energy is transferred through a medium continuously. While in a stationary wave, energy is restricted in a particular region. The energy does not move out of a given region. That is for a stationary wave. Whereas in a progressive wave, the energy moves through the medium continuously. Our lesson is about properties of waves. The lesson will unfold as follows. We have learning outcomes, prerequisites, puzzling question, learning activities, and an assignment at the end of the lesson. By the end of this lesson, learners are expected to be able to define speed, frequency, period, wavelength, crest, trough, and the amplitude of a wave. These are terms, these are terminologies that are associated to waves. Learners are expected to be able to draw graphs of displacement against distance and displacement against time for both wave pulses and continuous waves. Learners are expected to be able to recall the relationship V is equal to F lambda for both mechanical and electromagnetic waves. That is the relationship between the speed of a wave, its frequency, and its 
wavelength. Now, if we are asked to classify waves in terms of energy transmission and B, medium of transmission, what is going to be our response? Classify waves in terms of energy transmission and medium of transfer. Remember in the previous lesson, we looked at this classification and we came across uh, mechanical waves, EM waves, transverse waves, longitudinal waves, progressive waves, and uh, stationary waves. So in terms of energy transmission, how are we going to classify waves? Of course, in terms of energy transmission, we have progressive and stationary waves. As we just saw a few seconds ago, progressive in a progressive wave, the energy is transmitted along the medium. It is transmitted continuously. Whereas in a stationary wave, the energy is confined within a given region. So, we classify waves in terms of energy transmission as progressive waves and stationary waves. And in terms of medium of transfer, we know that there are some waves that require a material medium for their propagation, while there are others which do not require any material medium for their propagation. Here, we are going to classify waves as mechanical, and electromagnetic, where mechanical waves are those that need a material medium, and the electromagnetic waves are those that do not need a material medium. Now, look at the diagram you have on the screen. Describe what you see. It's a picture. What can you see in this picture? Can you try to describe it? Can you tell me what causes what you, you find on the picture? Okay. Uh, think about the answer and keep it to yourself. By the end of this lesson, I will be expecting that you should be able to describe what you see. The figure below shows a wave passing through a material medium. The dotted lines we have here shows the rest position of the particles of the medium. And then a few particles have been indicated, A, B, C, D, and E, which move, which oscillate according to the arrows you see on each particle, which shows the direction of oscill oscillation of the particle at the instant. So we have a wave train which passes through the medium and causes the particles to vibrate. We can see here the distance between this highest displacement point and the next leveled the lambda. And here we see that this highest displacement is called the amplitude of a wave. That highest point in a wave is what we call the crest. And the lowest point in a wave is what we call a trough. The distance between one crest and the next, or between one trough and the next, we call it wavelength, denoted lambda. So we are going to use this diagram to define these terms that are associated with wave motion. To begin with, what is equilibrium position, otherwise known as rest position? The equilibrium position is the position of particles in the medium when no wave or no disturbance is passing through it. When the medium is still free of any wave, the particles are at their equilibrium position. That is the rest position. Next, the crest of a wave. It is the highest point of displacement from the rest position. The highest point that a particle can reach 
when it is displaced from its rest position. That point is called the crest and it is measured in meters. Also, the trough is the lowest point of displacement from the equilibrium position. Take note, I call it the point. It is not, uh, it is a point, the, high, the lowest point of displacement of a particle. So a trough is somewhat just the opposite of a crest. Amplitude. The amplitude of a wave is the maximum displacement from the rest position. So it is actually a distance measured from the rest position to the maximum point of a wave. That is from the equilibrium position to the crest. That distance is what we call the amplitude. It is measured in meters. Wavelength. The wavelength of a wave is the distance occupied by one complete wave. When a wave passes through a medium, a complete wave occupies a given distance. That distance is what we call wavelength. It is measured in meters. And as you saw in the previous figure, it can be the distance between two successive crests or two successive troughs. We are going to see later on that a wavelength is equally the distance between two successive particles that are vibrating in phase. Okay, what is phase? Two points in a wave are said to be in phase if they are at the same displacement from the rest position and they move in the same direction. That is, they have the same frequency and the same amplitude. As the wave passes through the medium, the particles that are vibrating in the same direction and they have the same displacement from, this, from the equilibrium position are said to be in phase. If we go back to our diagram, you will see here that particles A and B, they are at the same displacement from the rest position but they are not vibrating in the same direction. Therefore, they are not in phase. You look at particles A and the C, they are at the same displacement from the rest position. And these two particles are vibrating in the same direction. Therefore, particles A and C are in phase. Equally, B, particles B and the D are in phase. Particles C and the E are in phase. So two particles are said to be in phase, or they are said to be vibrating in phase, if they have the same displacement from the rest position and they are vibrating in the same direction. Now, you equally see from the diagram, we have defined a wavelength to be the distance between two successive particles in phase. Therefore, the distance between A and C is a wavelength as indicated on the diagram. The distance between particles C and E is a complete wavelength because they are two successive particles vibrating in phase. So, wavelength can be defined as the distance between two successive particles vibrating in phase. All right, what is period? The period of a wave is the time taken to make one complete oscillation. When a wave passes through a medium, it causes the particles to oscillate. The time taken for a particle to make one complete oscillation is what we call a period, or what we call the period. It can be calculated from the formula, time taken divided by number of oscillations, as you have on your screen. Period equal to time taken divided by the number of oscillations. 
it is time. So the SI unit for period is the second. The frequency of a wave is the number of oscillations made per unit time. When a wave train passes through a, me a medium, when wave, a wave is passing through a medium, it causes the particles of the medium to oscillate. How many oscillations does a particle make in a unit time? This number of oscillations made per unit time is what we call the frequency of the wave. It can be calculated from the formula number of oscillations divided by time taken. The SI unit of frequency is the hertz, which is the same as per second. Now, we should take note that when only one oscillation is produced, the time taken to make this one oscillation is called the period. So, you see here that there exists a relationship between frequency and period. And this relationship is frequency equal 1 over period, or the period of a wave is equal to the inverse of the frequency. Now, the next word is the wave speed. Wave speed. This is the speed with which the wave moves through the medium. The wave profile is, the wave is moving. Energy is being transmitted through the medium. At what speed is this energy transmitted? At what speed does the wave travel through the medium? So this is what we call the speed of the wave. And we know that speed is measured in meters per second. The wave velocity. This is the speed with which the wave moves through the medium. It is defined as the distance covered per unit time and the measured in meters per second. So it's very similar to speed, but we know that speed and the velocity, though similar, one is a scalar quantity and the other is a vector quantity. So the wave velocity can be calculated from the formula velocity or the speed equal to the distance over time. The distance covered by the wave divided by the time taken to cover that distance. The wave equation. The wave equation is a relationship between the wave speed, the frequency of the wave, and uh, the wavelength. Now, if we consider the definition of speed, we have the speed of a wave is equal to the distance traveled over the time taken. Now, take for instance that the distance traveled is just the distance occupied by one wave. It means that the distance traveled will be equal to lambda. And that distance traveled by one wave alone, the time taken to travel that distance will be the period of the wave. Therefore, in the place of t in our equation of speed, we are going to put period. So the speed of the wave is equal to distance occupied by one complete wave over the time taken to produce that one wave, which is the period. And from the relationship between frequency and the period, we can rewrite the equation V is equal to 1 over T times lambda. And 1 over T is equal to the frequency. So substituting frequency there, we end up with the equation V is equal to F lambda. This equation is what we call the general wave equation. So it relates the speed of the wave, that is V, the speed of the wave, F, the frequency of the wave, and uh, lambda, which is the wavelength of the wave. What is wavefront? Wavefront is a line or a surface joining points in phase. A line that joins 
points which are in phase. And for convenience, a wave can be represented diagrammatically using uh, wavefronts. We can distinguish two types of wave, wavefronts, plain wavefronts and uh, circular wavefronts. And uh, since we have seen that particles which are at a crest, successive crest, they are in phase. So a line passing through one crest and the, the next line passing through the next crest, this distance is equal to wave length. Therefore, the distance between one wave front and the next is equal to the wavelength of the wave. So as I said, we have two types, plane wave fronts and the circular wave fronts. For waves made by a point source, for example, if you have steel water in a bowl and you drop a tiny stone in it, you observe that water ripples will be formed from the point you drop the stone and these water ripples will spread out. These water ripples will be circular. So the, an object, a round object dropped on the surface of water will produce circular waves which will spread out from the source and outwards. But if you touch the water of the surface of steel water with a straight object, a plain object like a roller, you see that plane waves will be produced on the surface of water. The direction in which the waves travel will be represented by a straight line called a ray. A ray is perpendicular to the wave front. It indicates the direction in which the wave travels. This is what I have just described here. We have a stone dropped in water, that is a picture. A small round object dropped in water. At the point where the stone or the object is dropped, water ripples are formed. These water ripples spread out. If we use, uh, if we draw that, we can represent that picture diagrammatically with figure 6a as you see on the board. So this represents the water ripples. The circles represent the water ripples. And the rays indicated here show the direction in which these water ripples spread out. So this wave on the water surface is represented in this diagram by wave fronts. And these are circular wave fronts. They spread out. Each ray here is perpendicular to the wave front. So the, the rays show that the waves spread out in all directions. We have plane waves, and as you can see in figure 6b, the plane waves are separated by a distance lambda. That is, the distance from one wave front to the next is a wavelength. And the arrow on the wave fronts indicate the direction in which the wave is traveling. So the waves are traveling from my left to the right, as you can see on the screen. So we can represent waves using wave fronts. Okay, graphs of wave pulses. We can represent waves using a displacement distance graph. It is a graph that shows the displacement of the particle, the particle of a medium from its equilibrium position with respect to the distance. That is a displacement distance graph. With such a graph, we can be able to come up with two important features, the amplitude of the wave and the wavelength of the wave. This a graph of displacement against distance. It is sinusoidal in shape. From this graph, a particle displaced from the rest position, the horizontal line, of course, is the rest position of the particles. A particle displaced from the rest position to the crest. So with a displacement distance graph, we can be able to get the amplitude of the wave. We will read it from the vertical axis. And from the horizontal axis, which represents distance, it means that the distance occupied by one complete wave 
can be read from this graph. So this graph can give us the wavelength of the wave and uh, the amplitude of a wave. So take note, a displacement distance graph can provide us with the amplitude of the wave and uh, the wavelength of the wave. Both transverse and longitudinal waves can be represented with a displacement distance graph. We have the next type of graphs. We'll have displacement time graphs. In this case, the graph will show the displacement of a particle of the medium from its equilibrium position with respect to time. As time goes on, what is the displacement of a particle of the medium? Such a graph will provide us with three features. That is the amplitude of the wave, the period and the frequency of the wave. As we are going to see, figure 6b here shows us a displacement time graph for a wave. Now, given that the horizontal axis or the vertical axis represents the displacement, so we can get the amplitude of the wave. We read off from the vertical axis at that point, at this point, we can read of the amplitude of the wave. Now, take note, we cannot get the wavelength of the wave because the wavelength is the distance occupied by, the, by a complete wave. But the horizontal axis represents time and not distance. So we cannot get wavelength from this wave. Rather, we will be able to get the time taken to produce one complete wave. And that time is equal to the period. So this is one complete wave up to this point. Therefore, the time taken to produce the wave is the period. A second wave, two waves will be produced in two times the period. So from this graph, we get the amplitude of the wave. We equally get the period of the wave. Now, we have seen earlier that the period of a wave is related to the frequency. There is a relationship between period and frequency. Once you get the period of a wave, you can be able to get its frequency. So from a displacement time graph, we will get the amplitude, the frequency, and the period. We are now going to look at some exercises. Water ripples produced by a straight vibrator travel across the surface of water in a ripple tank. The horizontal distance between a crest and an adjacent trough is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. A. Calculate the wavelength of the wave. B. The wave travels 0 0.48 meters in 1.2 seconds. Calculate the average speed of the wave. And the C. Calculate the frequency of the vibrator. Okay, the expected response we have. We have been told in the question that the distance, the distance water ripples produced by a vibrator travel across the water surface in a ripple tank. The horizontal distance between a crest and an adjacent trough, a crest and an adjacent trough, is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. So we are asked to calculate the wavelength. OK. Now, we have question 2. Study the graph in figure 7 and answer the questions below. So from this graph, you determine the amplitude of the wave, the wavelength, and the speed of the wave, given that the frequency is 16 hertz. OK, for the first question, we have the amplitude of the wave is, of course, 4 centimeters. 
and uh, the wavelength is 20 meters. How do we get our 20 meters? We have here the distance, the crest to the crest to trough distance is equal to lambda over 2. Because from one crest to the next trough horizontally, it is half a wavelength. Therefore, the wavelength will be twice that distance. So our wavelength will be 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. Then the speed of the wave is defined as the distance traveled over the time taken. So the wave travels a distance of 0 0.48 meters in a time of 1.8 seconds, giving a speed of 0 0.4 meters per second. Now, from the wave equation, V is equal to F lambda. We can get the frequency of the wave by making F the subject. So substituting the speed and the wavelength we have obtained in A and B will give us a frequency of 10 hertz. For question two, we see here that the amplitude of the wave, just looking at the wave, the amplitude is four centimeters. Remember, we can get it from a displacement distance graph. We just read from the vertical axis. And the wavelength is the distance occupied by one complete wave. So from the graph, we see this is one complete wave. Therefore, the wavelength of the wave is equal to 20 meters. Now, C, we are asked to determine the speed of the wave, given that the frequency is 16 hertz. If we have the frequency 16 hertz, and we have the wavelength, which is equal to 20 meters, then we use the wave equation and determine the speed of the wave. So the speed of the wave gives us 320 meters per second. All right. So the answer to our puzzling question, this picture actually gives us water ripples. It is a picture of water ripples produced on the surface of water. And it is produced when a spherical object is dropped into, onto the surface of still water. Our assignment for today will be to study the graph you have on your screen and answer the questions. Determine the amplitude, the period, the frequency, and the wavelength of the waves. You determine the amplitude, the period, the frequency. You also determine the wavelength of the wave if the speed is 40 meters per second. I am expecting the correct answer in the next lesson. So our lesson was drawn from ordinary level physics, modern approach by Paco Ivo, and the standard ordinary level physics by Tan Physics and others. Our next lesson will be on wave phenomena. Una tege si, ma tege yop. Una tege minga, ma tege nyom. Una tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa tina bia jinkido. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.